Good morning, one and all. Welcome, my name is Kathy, and I would like to welcome you to the next episode of the Scrap and Crafty Gardener. Have you ever had days where you wanted to do card making or scrapbooking and you just weren't inspired? I made this card yesterday, which is not my greatest card, but I loved how I did the background. And for that, I just took ink pads and just kind of dop, 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 dop them all over. And that was great. So I thought I would try it again, maybe doing pink tones, and I wanted to do the same elephants and maybe make a Mother's Day card. Well, this is what came out. It looks like a massacre occurred. It's blood stains everywhere. So that that just took me off track. So I thought I've been wanting to make my own checky tool for a long time now, and I've wanted to cover this acrylic block that I use for holding cards down when they dry. And it's so chipped and it just looks horrible. So I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do today. I cleaned both of them really well. Um, I did soap and water and then I cleaned them off with alcohol to get off any thing. Um, and then on the block, I have this napkin. And I know it shows in the middle here, but I wanna kind of put the napkin down over top of that block. And for inside my Chucky tool, I'm going to use UV resin um, with, uh, I've got a couple of resin colors I want to try to mix together. This peacock blue and light green with this, it's cut, well, what's it called? Sea green glitter. And that's going to require putting on some gloves and masks. So I'm going to do that here in just a little bit. I thought I'd get started with the block, then I can set that aside. And this video is going to have several stops and starts because I have to allow for the process to go on. But I'm going to start with, I've cleaned this off and I'm going to use chalk paint. And this is folk art home decor, uh, white Adirondack. And I've never used chalk paint before. Um, so we're going to see how this goes. And I'm just going to put on a thin layer to start. And you don't really need to put this on, but you want to have it something behind the napkin because when you peel the layers off, it's going to be translucent. So the cats won't look quite as good. So I'm just going to put this on. And then once this is dry, then I'll put down a layer of Mod Podge on top of that. And then that will have to dry. Okay, that's just a thin coat. And I'll probably have to do another coat once this is dry. But for now, we're gonna set this aside. And I, I have waxed paper on my mat underneath here. And I'm just gonna wrap this in a wet one here so that in a few moments when I go wash it off, it'll still be. Now we're gonna sit this over to the side of my mat and we're gonna start with the UV resin. So I'm gonna put on my mask and I tested this. I think my voice still sounds the same. And now I'm gonna put on my gloves. Oh, I need a Dixie cup. I use Dixie cups and I put two of them together just to kind of keep the resin in there. You don't necessarily have to wear a mask if you're in a well ventilated area with the UV resin, but since I'm in a basement with no windows, the mask's going on and is on. I'm just going to pour some of this UV resin in here. I don't think I'm going to need very much, but I want to get it the color I need. All right, set that aside, <coughs> even with a mask, but that's my normal anymore. I'm going to just put a couple drops in to see what color I get, and I stir it up with a little toothpick. I'm 
that's a pretty green. And that may just be the color I'm needing for inside this. Now let's throw some glitter in there. Okay, I need to add a little bit more resin. I put too much glitter. Which you can do, that's not a problem. Come on out. Hello. There we go. I'm gonna have to get my other bottle out for my whenever I do my next projects. But this should be good to get me what I'm doing today. Yeah, that's much better. Not as thick. You want it to be drippy drippy. You don't want it to be runny but you don't want it to be thick and chunky either. Okay, now we're just gonna turn this upside down. Oh, I need my blue light. I'm just using a, a blue light for when I get started on this because I wanna see what the color is gonna be before I go all out. So I'm just gonna now, need a paintbrush. Let's see. There we go. This one will work. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a nice color. So we're just going to pour it all in here. This is going to be a pretty color. Not left-handed. I don't know why I did that. But I can do some things with my left hand. Now I'm going to just kind of roll this around in here to kind of get this to go where I want it to go and the coverage that I want for it. All right, yeah, I don't know if you can see, but I have my sides covered. This is just gonna be a light layer, so I'm gonna pour this out now, which sounds weird. Um, but I just want a light layer to get my color started. All right, and now I'm gonna hit it with this blue light. This just quickly starts setting the UV resin. And just gives it a go before we put it in. For, yeah, see, and it's already set. We can turn it and it won't run. So now I'm gonna finish pouring in the rest. I'll do a little bit at a time. And I hope this camera angle is working. I figured out how to lower the camera um, so you get a little closer view of what I'm doing or what I'm not doing when I'm not inspired. Okay, and now I'm going to set that again just where it is because I want a deep concentration in the bottom. And it only needs a few seconds to set with this light. You see, it's set. Now, I need to get some on the sides. So I'm gonna turn this over. Somehow, let's pour some in. And we're gonna get some down to the sides here. Yep, yeah, just like that. And we're gonna set it. This is like the, um, the black light. For those of you who lived in the 60s and 70s like I did, it's just a black light. All right, good. See how that, and it is set, so I need to do that around the corners. And we want that to fill in there, just like that. Did 
It's filling in nicely. Then once I get all the spots, I think I will have to get some more made up. So I'll have to get out my new bottle because I want this to be coated quite a bit. I want to have a nice thick layer. Now this resin, you can mix it up um, and it won't set on you unless you expose it to um, the sunlight or a UV light. But it will um, work its way through a wax cup. So they do have silicone cups that you can get to store it in. Um, yeah, and look how that's looking. That's looking pretty good. Turn that off. And this just runs on uh, batteries. Okay, uh, I'm going to put you on pause because I need to take a break from my mask and I get some more resin mixed up. Okay, I am back. I have some more mixed up. Got my mask back on. And this should probably be the final application of this. Put two globs in. Kind of get it where I want it to be. light on it. That's already set. See, that's how it's looking so far. Put some more globs in. Move it where I want it, over here to the side. Right in there like that. Hit it with the light. Yeah, it's not going to require much more here. I hope you'll find this interesting i just lost my card making mojo today for some odd reason but i've been wanting to do these two projects for a really long time all right didn't quite set there now let's see if i turn it over where i need some more right over here in this corner Right in there. A little bit over here too. Now this flashlight doesn't totally cure it. It just stops it. Um, and I'll need to cure it with my uh, UV light. Um, my nail lamp here in just a moment. And that needs to go for mm, anywhere from two to five minutes. All right, now along the side that's how it's looking all right i think and i'm oh no there's a little bit over here that needs a little bit more so we'll put some on this side and then i'll be able to clean off the edges and put it under the major lamp that should be good Oop. uv resin very sticky Okay, now let's get a wet one here, pardon the reach. And I'm just gonna clean off, you don't really need to clean it off, it would harden on there. 
But if you don't want it on the outside, which I'm going to get another wet one. So I'm going to clean off the bottom. And the top. Okay, I think I've got it all off the sides. If you don't get it off the sides, you can scrape it off later with a razor blade. But I try to get it off beforehand. All right, now I'm just going to move. Oh, I forgot to turn that off. Move my nail lamp over. And I'm going to stick it inside. And this will take about five minutes. So I'm going to come back when that's done. And when this block is dry, and we'll put the Mod Podge on, and then we'll go from Okay, there. I am back. Um, this is done. This is how it dried. Looks nice. I did have this Keep Calm. It's vinyl, and it was in my pieces, parts box, I call it. Whenever I cut something out and I don't use it in a project, I save it. And this was like Keep Calm and Drink Coffee or something, but I just wanted Keep Calm on here. Now, for the bottom, I'm going to leave the plastic just as it is. You could just put your felt right on here, but I want to leave this on in case I need to get inside and change it for some reason. And I used this die cut. It's a round circle die that was just the right size. However, it, it really didn't cut through. It just kind of embossed it, so I used my scissors and cut around it. Now, I'm going to just attach this to the plastic lid with my Aileen's Tacky Glue. You could use hot glue, but I've not had a whole lot of success with hot glue sticking to plastic. Um, it comes off after a while. I have not used the Aileen's on plastic. I know it works great with fabric. So since this is a felt piece that I'm putting on here, I'm hoping it's going to work and stick well. Um, otherwise, I might end up using E6000, um, but that's a really stinky glue, so I'd have to go outside to do that or put my respirator back on. So I'm just going to put this down, and hopefully this is what's going to hold it. Um, but I'm just going to set that down there, and I am going to pop it on because I'm going to turn it upside down and let it dry that way. But that's pretty cool. I'm actually kind of excited about that. I did put a little bit, oh, I see some right here that I missed. Come off there, there we go. Um, I put a little bit of washi tape in a contest ring color just to kind of, in the, in the spot where your hand grips. I like that. So let's see how that works. Oh, I wanted to show you my um, mask that I put on when I was using the UV resin. It's, this is um, PA1 Original Number 3 Filter. It works really well for when you work with chemicals and fine particles of dust. So now we're going to put a coat of Mod Podge, because this is dry now, that chalk paint. And if I can get my Mod Podge open. I'm using the gloss Mod Podge because that's what I have available right now. Doesn't really matter because we're going to be covering it up. And I'm just going to brush on a good coat. Um, and I'll take it off the sides uh, if it runs down. Let's move you over here. This will just help adhere the napkin on. I kind of liked that this block was see-through because when I put it on a project, then I could see where my placement was, but I really didn't like the cuts and scratches and dings and dents and chips. Because it made it look I don't, made it look filthy, dirty, and it really wasn't. It was just, it's all chipped and scratched. Just a nice, smooth coat. And I'll go around and take off 
any um, that ran down the sides. And again, if once it's ran down the sides, I could take it off uh, with an X-Acto knife later on. Now, that's going to dry for about an hour. And I will welcome back. back. It is much later the same day. This took about three hours to dry. And I believe it, it's because it is so rainy and damp today. Um, but it is dry. So we're going to continue on. And this is also nice and dry. I am loving this stamping tool all right so now we're going to take our napkin and i cut it down to two strips and you just need to peel the layers back so you're just down to one single layer i'm gonna move that off to the side there now i'm gonna figure out where i want it i kind of want to have this little that cat and then maybe this kind of centered because I have an orange cat and I've got two uh, all gray striped tabbies and then I have a gray and white ah, gray and white striped tabby so let's see if I can get as much of the kitties as I can that should be good now you got it where you want it take a piece of parchment paper well you know what I'm going to put it down and I'm going to put a little bit of scotch tape. This may not hold, but I'm going to put it down right where I want it to be. Get those little kitty's eyes up in there. There, that's better. I'm just taping it down to the wax paper that I have underneath here. And you don't need the wax paper on it. I just left it on from earlier. Now I'll put my parchment paper down. And then you just need any iron. I have the, the little Cricut Mini Press. Uh, you can use absolutely any iron, but you wanna make sure you don't have water in it because you don't want any steam. And what we're gonna do is melt the Mod Podge into the napkin. So I'm just gonna run it over the top. I haven't tried this on plastic before, um, or the acrylic block that this stamp block was made from but we're giving it a go if it turns out great i got a video for today if it doesn't okay i'll show you what not to do and i still have a video for today and i'm not staying in any one place for too long just kind of swirling it around but using a slight pressure to smooth out the napkin. Now let's see if this is stuck down. We'll just try to peel off the edges. It is stuck down, so good. That is all we need to do with the iron, so I'm gonna turn it off. Now, I'm going to take my nail file which is like a really tough, um, it is, it's a nail file for, for manicures. And then just go to the edges. And take off the napkin you don't need on the sides. You could have also put your um, Mod Podge over the side, but I only wanted to do the top. Now this, what it has done, it has melted the Mod Podge into the top, into all the layers of the napkin. You don't really need to seal it unless you were gonna use the, um, the top for something, and I'm only gonna use the bottom of this. There. Okay. Now, I get to fancy it up a little bit. Nice and smooth, no wrinkles. So I'm gonna take my favorite stickles and let's see. We're gonna color some kitty eyeballs here. Make their little eyes sparkle. 
This is Stickles in the diamond color. And this is a new bottle, so it's not wanting to come out. So let's get a, a pin here. There we go. And I'm just filling in the eyeballs. Because my project's got a glitter in, and it's still not coming out very well. like there's a plug down in there. Maybe it's... I think this bottle might be plugged. But it's a brand new bottle that I just opened. So let me get out my old bottle. It still has some, but it takes a while to squeeze it out. And put it in the eyes and I'll just do this side of the block first and then I have a paintbrush that I use only for stickles I don't clean it it's a real stiff and that just helps you smooth it around a little bit I'll also put a little bit on his collar. Now let's do these eyeballs. I hope that Stickles bottle isn't plugged because that's a brand new bottle. And I hate to see money wasted. I put a little bit on the grapes since I've got some extra on my brush. Put a little too much in that cat's eyeball. Adding just a hint here and there. And maybe a little bit on this blanket. try I just got these the other day uh, liquid pearls dimensional pearlescent paint in brass I'm just gonna put a couple of dots here and there I really just want to see what these look like um, probably really big dots and I didn't need that much but I'm gonna see what they do if it looks bad it's just my stamping platform See, they kind of, they look like little domes, like little mini volcanoes. Let's see. This I'm going to have to practice. Because when I pull it up, it makes like a, a string. So I'm going to have to play around with that. Uh, put one here to stop squeezing then lift up okay that's not so bad I'll put one over here All right. okay now I think I want to age the edges a little bit Distress them, but I call it aging. I'm going to use some um, Tim Holtz Distress Oxide in Vintage Photo. And this may look weird. Like I said, it's just my stamping block. So let's see what we can come up with. It might not even be enough on here. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, 
I definitely wasn't inspired to do cards today, but these two projects actually come out pretty cute, I think. Now, I think I might need to do this with a brush just to get a little bit more on the edges. Oh no, there it's starting to come. I apologize for the lighting. I think having my camera down lower has um, added a little bit of shadow to my desk here. So I'll play with that um, for tomorrow's video. Um, tomorrow I will be basing tomorrow's video on the recent craft roulette challenge from last night. Um, whoops, smeared that. Let's see if I can wipe that off really quick. Put a new drop on. I'll put a drop there just because. All right, now I'll get that toothpick and straighten out the points on my... I'm anxious to see if these dry flat or if they're gonna stay domed up and pointy um, like I made them. I guess you'll find out in tomorrow's video because um, these will have dried overnight. I think that's all I'm going to do for now. So this is what my new large acrylic stamp block, that's all chipped and scratched and cut and broke, that I turned into my new stamping tool to lay down when I'm doing a card. I just lay this down and let it, let the glue dry. I'm going to have to figure out that stickles. And this is my brand new Chucky tool. Well, I guess it's not a Chucky tool because that's copyrighted. So this will be my um, stamping helper. I love how that turned out. All right, that is it for today. I'll show you this tomorrow when I make a card um, and I use this platform. I'll try my finger here to get that to go flat. It doesn't really want to. But I hope that has inspired you to try something new cover up some old stuff and if you because this came from a candle so if you have one of those I'm not really a candle person I like them for when the power goes out but I don't like scented candle candles and someone had gifted me a candle and I just took this from the top of the jar and we'll see how it works right now it goes pretty smooth but we will find out how long it's going to last that's it. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.